What if I told you there's a form of pollution that's invisible to the eye, but still presents a large issue and challenge across a number of industries? I'm talking about noise, and today I'm joined by a noise expert to talk to us a little bit more about that. His name is Friso Kopman. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Excellent, excellent. Well, Friso, I'm excited to talk about this today because I think it's, like I mentioned, it's something that you can't actually see with your eyes, but it, it is something that is an issue and something that we should discuss. Uh, but first, let's get some background on Burgess Arting. Tell us a little bit more about the history of Burgess Arting and what it is that you do. Yeah, absolutely. So Burgess Arting is actually a merger of two former companies called Burgess Manning as well as Arting Thermal Acoustics. Um, Burgess Manning was founded by Charles F. Burgess uh, as the Burgess Battery Company, um, early 1900s, and from 1930 they started selling sinuses as well. Um, Burgess started off as a battery company and because he wanted to make batteries for car radios, he figured let's see if that works, but the car engines were too loud so something needed to be done about that. and. The rumor has it, the story goes that he invented the uh, muffler for the car to mitigate the noise in order for the radios to be audible so that he could sell more batteries. Whether it's true or not, it's a nice story to tell, um, but we're still here today and Seco Environmental bought us, uh, bought both Burgess Manning as well as Arting Thermal Acoustics. Um, Arting Thermal Acoustics is a company that was founded in the 1960s as a steel construction company and gradually grew into the company we are today selling both steel stacks as well as steel structures and silencers for those stacks. Thermal insulation as well for uh, hot ducting. Um, so in the last decade we were bought and acquired by Seco and merged into a single silencer company called Burgess Arting. Joining forces uh, was a good thing, and right now we have a, a global team that's ready to serve uh, the, the noise pollution industry. So we know that noise is obviously a, a problem across a, a number of industries, a challenge to be solved. Um, but I think that we could start off, Riso, just with a really basic question here, uh, just to get everybody on the same page. Uh, tell me, what is noise? Noise is a disruptive uh, or destructive sound and sound itself is uh, within human physiology and psychology. Um, the way that sound waves are being received and interpreted by our brains. So imagine you have a stone and you throw it into a pond. You have these waves on top of the surface of the water. And much like in air, those waves of sound or the sound waves will propagate into our ear and tickle the inner workings of our ear. And that's what we perceive as sound. Now, within physics, the sum of sound, uh, the sum of the waves is uh, what we perceive as sound. And each sound wave will have its own frequency and will have its own amplitude. And this amplitude is generally expressed as sound pressure level um, and decibels. So the moment that amplitude becomes too excessive is when we're talking about uh, disruptive or uh, uh, destructive sound and disruptive sound is when you have loss of um, loss of concentration um, being distracted or sometimes even being disrupted within your sleep um, when we're talking about destructive sound it is much worse than that it can literally damage your hearing as well as damage constructions so that is something that Burgess Arting is here for to help control that's really fascinating. You, you mentioned that point where it becomes excessive. Um, are there thresholds then that, that you're trying to stay under uh, or, or something along those lines? Kind of talk me through what's excessive noise and, and what's not excessive noise. Because we all live with a certain, you know, a, a certain level of noise just in our day-to-day day -day lives, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So zero decibels is the absolute threshold of hearing for an average human. And 85 decibels is what most authorities will uh, dictate as being the safety threshold for sound. Um, actually, when you reach levels of 110 decibels, uh, you will start to feel pain within your ears. But that's not necessarily um, 
disruptive sound because that's that's destructive sound when you have loss of hearing. Disruptive sound can be anything from a mosquito waking you up at night or um, children playing, uh, someone tapping their pen during an exam. Um, so if you have a quiet room of 30 decibels or 40 decibels like a, a library or an office, you can be annoyed by, by the quietest of sounds, which can still be uh, disruptive. Talking about regulations, there are definitely regulations for that as well, because in most residential areas, you'll have a nighttime limit of 45 decibels or lower, depending on the area. Um, and during daytime, that's typically 10 decibels above that. And a fun fact is that 10 decibels perceived for the human hearing is about perceived as twice as loud. That's really, really interesting. Okay, so walk us through the process that a Burgess Arting Specialist takes to evaluate a system um, and determine the best solutions to meet their needs. So uh, if someone is reducing the, the noise that comes from, from a particular system, how do you evaluate that and how do you walk them through that process? So the first thing we try to do is, is fully understand what it is that the customer has in terms of their system as well as the requirements and other parameters that we need to keep track of, like footprint or pressure drop. Um, because ultimately it's the system that will dictate whatever we need to be doing, but it's our solution that has a direct effect on their system too. So making sure that everything falls into place, uh, we will look at the system first, figure out whether we know all of the requirements, all the parameters that we need for our calculations, and that we understand what it is that the customer requires, but also make sure that the customer understands what it is that we are going to offer them so that we're on the same page. And then secondly, we'll start looking into the solutions. Now we have a wide variety of applications that we serve and we have a wide variety of solutions for those applications, which means that sometimes we will have a solution that is, uh, or several solutions that is fit for a single purpose. And we will look at the whole system, see what the benefits and drawbacks are for the various applications that we serve and the solutions that we want to offer. Um, and it can sometimes result into various types of silencers like vent silencers or uh, reactive silencers, absorptive type silencers. And you can also combine some of the, the physics uh, that, that come into play with them. And we have various models that we use to ultimately find one or several solutions uh, within the sweet spot for the customer. Um, and if several uh, solutions are on par with each other, we will actually quote them several, uh, several options. Um, and in some cases, we even offer uh, advice to our customer to change their system or operating parameters on their end to help reduce this, the overall sound that we're looking for. So we're going for a, a, a system solution much rather than just selling them a silencer. Now, you're obviously an expert in, in sound and in noise, and so you have a lot of knowledge in this particular area. But do you ever find that, that your clients and that your customers are surprised by how you're able to mitigate sound? Well, for the first time, I guess, yes, because uh, they keep coming back. So to say that they're always surprised, I guess not. But even our long-term served customers, uh, we sometimes pull a trick uh, and we can surprise them with whatever we serve, uh, whatever we supply to our uh, long-term served customers as well. So yeah, definitely uh, we can come up with solutions. Um, sometimes even a solution that the customer didn't inquire and we say, hey, we think uh, we have a different path that will lead to the same requirement being met uh, at the end, which is, which is a, a better solution for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you have any examples or uh, case studies that you can share with us just of times when, uh, when this has been extremely beneficial for, for some of your customers? Yeah, there are some, some cases. Um, so say for a typical vent system, uh, you have a valve. Um, pressure drop across a valve will generate noise within the valve and that noise needs to be mitigated. But you always have a residual pressure that you need for the flow to pass through the remaining system and our silencer. So if pressure drop is the governing parameter for noise being generated, our vent silencers will, will target that pressure drop and try to break down the total system pressure drop that you have from one start to another 
and then break that up into various um, sections in order to make sure that the total sum of all the sources that you have created will not be as loud as just a single source. Um, and that can sometimes lead to uh, a smaller system because if you have additional back pressure onto the system, that's the thing that we will advise customers often. It's like if we can generate more back pressure onto your system, you'll have a lower volumetric flow, which means that we can have a smaller silencer. And if we make sure that we keep within the, the noise limitations, that means that we have a smaller silencer. And it also means that you can have a smaller pipe size for mm. the line between the valve and the silencer. Um, other examples are for GT exhaust systems because the Arding branch uh, is also very big on uh, hot ducting for GT exhaust systems, for instance. We also have a good grip on thermal insulation as well as the acoustical benefits of that. So we can look at the total system and for, for say a GT exhaust system or any source that is radiating noise out of the ductwork as well as through say the stack mouth, we have a noise requirement that we need to meet at a given position. And by looking at the various sources and the various positions that the noise can break out of that system, we can sometimes come up with a solution where a silencer in the, in the system upstream will lower the requirements for say insulation or an acoustical shroud around that system downstream of that silencer. Um, or in other cases, uh, the reverse can be true where increasing the casing thickness or the insulation thickness of the system of the customer, uh, they don't need a silencer because the radiated noise will no longer be an issue. So those are instances where we have definitely surprised our customers with our advice and capabilities. Excellent. Well, Friso, as we wrap up our conversation today, do you have any closing thoughts, any closing statements you'd like to make just on what uh, Burgess Arding provides, the benefits of, of noise reduction and mitigation, uh, or anything that we haven't touched on up to this point? Well, like you started off, noise is definitely an invisible and a growing concern within the industry. Uh, the industries are becoming uh, more powerful, uh, more wattage. So in that sense, noise is also going up. So a growing concern. And uh, yeah, we are here with a uh, international team ready to serve you in your own time zone. Um, so we are here to listen to your acoustical problem and find the solution that you need to solve that problem with you. Friso Kopman from Burgess Arding, thank you so much for joining us here today and talking to us a little bit more about noise. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. And everyone, thank you for tuning in today. Of course, we'll be back soon with more content from Seco. But until then, I've been your host today, Tyler Kern. Thanks for watching.